When I first arrived at Central Florida, I was unaware of the rich history present within each town and city. Join me as I speak with Pam Schwartz, the Executive Director of the Orange County Regional History Center, and explore the many layers that make up the story of Orange County and how it has grown to be what it is today. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you so much for having me here. This is just an amazing exhibit, exhibits, I will say, because the whole museum is wonderful. Thank you, we're glad to have you here. Thank you, tell us about the history of Orange County. Where did it all start? The story can go back infinitely, of course. Uh, the History Center has actually four floors of exhibitions, uh, some that are changing, some that are more permanent. And we actually cover around 14,000 years of history. Now, it goes beyond that, right? But for what we've actually been able to know and study, that's where we start. It's 14,000 years of history across a seven county region. So it's Orange County and each of the counties that touch it are part of the stories here. Uh, a lot of times things don't happen in the vacuum of a county. And because county boundaries sometimes change, the stories are a little bit bigger regional, statewide, and even have relevancy nationally. So we cover a lot in this museum. Uh, when you come, you actually get to start at the beginning of that history. 14,000 years ago, we're looking at the natural environment. We're looking at prehistoric creatures, right? Things were really big. Think of like woolly mammoths and all sorts of animals that were very, very large. Uh, and we talk about the natural environment, how that formed. We talk about the aquifer. We talk about basically the, how the, the peninsula came to be throughout time. And we go through this pretty quickly because that oldest history, there's not a lot we really know about it right? There's not a lot of artifacts with which to tell those stories. So we start to come closer to modern day. We talk about some of the, the individuals who lived here for a very long time. Uh, for example, the Wendover Bog people is actually a really fascinating story. This is actually a bog burial site in central Florida uh, that's six to 7,000 years old, and nobody even knows about it. It's really incredible history. We come forward to cultures like the Timucua, uh, people in the St. John's, people who lived up and down our river and waterways ate shellfish, that's why we have so many of these uh, mounds, these shell mounds that we see at different state sites um, throughout our community. And we keep working forward. There's a lot of time that transpires between here, but as we come through learning about the people who were here before European settlement, coming into European settlement in the 1500s, you go into this sort of several hundred, few, I should say about 300 year um, battle between the Spanish the British, the French, also the individuals who are already living here. Uh, and it's just this ongoing conquest for ownership essentially of the peninsula. Uh, trying to make that compact history in an exhibition, um, but also just to tell people how complicated it all was. There was a lot of coming, going, and a lot of bloodshed, quite frankly. But that leads us up through um, an era more people can understand and are a little bit more familiar with, which is when uh, Florida is actually ceded to America and you've got American settlers coming uh, from the north down to this area. So that's sort of the first chapter. I don't know if you have any questions before we kind of keep moving through. Yeah, where are some places that they could still see some of this earlier part of history? Are there any exhibits or things going on? I know, I will say that um, one of the parks that we just purchased some land has a cypress piling of a bridge that used to be, they think it, they could, they've um, aged it back to the Spanish settlers. Interesting, yeah. I would like to hear more about that, <laughs> uh, actually. You know, history is all around us, um, sometimes in very visible ways. The History Center is a historic building. It was a courthouse in 19, built in 1927 by one of Orlando's most notable architects, Murray King. Um, people don't realize that every single thing, uh, you walk through a state park, you walk through an Orange County park, and there are little bits of history if you know what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a, a lot of really great day trips um, throughout Central Florida that you can, can go and visit or do. Uh, a lot of our parks have a ton of history. Uh, if you want to go out to the coast, there is a, a historic marker for that Wendover Bog I had mentioned. Um, there's Turtle Mound, which is actually out on the Canaveral uh, Seashore, which is a really um, a, a good example of a, of a shell mound here. And it was actually shaped like a turtle. We don't know exactly why. They think it's because of where people were taking their canoes on and off of uh, and how it helped to shape that mound. 
there's just a, a ton of different sites. And there's a lot of really great historical institutions. Um, many of the, the counties around Orange County has small historical societies. You can go and learn about those places. Um, there's really a lot, of, a lot of different things. So we covered the first section mm -hmm. and some spots that he, they could go and visit. Yeah. Take us into the next section of our history. So kind of coming through that Spanish colonial period and moving into more what we would call modern day history in the 1800s, um, there's a lot happening here. There's still a lot of battle over the land. And so we see um, different narratives in history and those are narratives that we as the History Center are still working to learn about and to uncover the truths, the stories, to find the individuals who lived this history, uh, who of course are no longer with us, but we'd like to learn about their lives. So as we go sort of from that first oldest gallery, we move into what we call sort of the pioneer era. And we talk about the Seminole culture. Um, the Seminole are still a living, thriving people here. I think sometimes people think that these cultures are of the past. Um, there's a really incredible museum you can go to in South Florida called the Atataki Museum. And it talks all about the Seminole people, um, their life ways, and how they really established themselves uh, in Florida. They used to be more present in Central Florida. Um, so we do tell their story here, and we talk about how they were impacted by pioneers, American settlers coming south. So there's, a, again, a continued sort of battle for land um, and, I guess you could say, rights uh, for what was happening in Central Florida. But at that point in the 1800s is really when Orlando, as we know it, starts to build. Um, there's small communities popping up. When a place got a post office, it was sort of official, uh, became a city. Orlando itself is actually platted from this very spot that we're standing on. The first property sort of donated to make this a city, to make it the county seat, um, is right where the History Center is at, which is kind of a cool fact for us all the time. Yeah, that really is. Yeah, and so close to Lake Eola, which is, of course, a huge icon for us. Um, if you don't know, most of uh, Florida's lakes are actually just sinkholes. Uh, lake Eola is just a sinkhole, right? Which doesn't sound as pretty as when you say it's a lake. Um, so a lot of interesting history that sort of comes right from the spot and starts to radiate out as we move through that history. Community starts to build. There's business. There's people coming from all over. Um, there's a ton of history. We could talk for a very long time through all of this. But what you really start to see is based on transportation. People have to be able to come here to live. You also have to be able to get things out. Citrus, a huge industry. Everybody knows that Central Florida is tied to citrus, right? Mm -hmm. um, but there was actually a, a, even a freeze in 1894, 1895, sort of consecutive freezes that really devastated that industry and did change the landscape of Central Florida, um, literally, <laughs> um, but also in terms of diversifying the types of industry that were here. So it's really kind of a changing chapter for Central Florida, coming through, building a community, thinking we've got it made, people are coming here, uh, people want our goods. And things sort of change at that point. But hopping into the 1900s is when we start to see these real estate booms and then busts and then booms, right? It's sort of this up and down ebb and flow of life here based on a lot of different factors. Um, but the railroad is really what made Orlando, made Orange County possible in terms of bringing people here and again, getting those goods out. Um, People came here for health tourism first. I mean, we all know of Central really? Florida. Yeah, people know of Central Florida as this tourist destination. It's actually been that way far before Disney and the parks ever came. Uh, a lot of these sort of what we call roadside attractions, and you'll see sort of ghosts or remnants of those. Um, driving, you'll see a giant dinosaur on the side of the road of what was once a, a gas station, right? But it was part of an attraction. Um, you start to see these things. People have heard of Cypress Gardens, where Legoland now is. Um, you can still go and get a flavor <laughs> for what used to be there. Some of these attractions are of a bygone era, um, but are really amazing things that brought people here. Another huge thing in terms of transportation was tin can tourism. The advent and rise of cars. People had their own individual ability to pack it up and come down and visit. And again, there's sunshine here. There's the, the, the healing waters of Florida. And so people were coming and coming and it really started to build industry here because of that. Again, tourism happened here far before the theme parks. We sort of move through, of course, there's depression there's wars, uh, and that really changes things too. We start to see a housing bust. Uh, and then we see a boom again and rise after World War II. We have a lot of naval activity and military activity 
throughout this region. And so they, a lot of the uh, individuals who'd come from all over the United States were like, oh, I kind of like the weather here, maybe I'll stay. And so you start to see another boom happening. Then we start to get into the chapters that a lot of people actually don't really know about, civil rights in Central Florida. Civil rights has a huge story here. For a long time, people thought, well, you know, it's, it's not Birmingham. It's not, it's not these other places with these big stories. A lot happened here. Um, we just, just did a whole exhibition that talked about that 3,200 square feet of space talking about um, part of this time. So there's a lot of stories. You see NASA and Martin Marietta coming in. Uh, you see Disney and the theme parks. As we know, that changes the landscape of Central Florida forever, right? Mm -hmm. We're not a sleepy, wild little um, pioneer town. I mean, they used to talk about shootouts um, on Orange Avenue. People would ride their horses straight into the saloons. It really started to change <laughs> at this oh, point. Oh, it's kind of still like that. <laughs> sometimes, yes, unfortunately. Um, sometimes history repeats itself if we're not paying attention. Um, so, you know, we navigate all the way through these stories. We have exhibitions um, about a lot of these different topics. There's obviously a lot of history that happens after Disney, coming up to present day. Right now, our institution doesn't have that part of the exhibit, but in the next couple of years, we're actually redesigning all of the exhibition galleries here. We're going to be making sure that all of our narratives are much more reflective of our entire community's experience. Uh, and part of that is actually having to meet people and get items and stories and photographs that tell those stories. So things will be changing here. We'll be telling different stories, more in depth. We have a lot of artifacts that aren't currently on display that we'll be able to share. And we'll be bringing the history from 14,000 years all the way up to the present, because I think we all know we're living in historic times. And so we want people to come in and see how they're reflected in what's been happening to them uh, and how that sort of relates to where we're headed for the future. Mm. Walking through this exhibit here, I did see a mention of Fort Christmas, mm -hmm. which we do have Fort Christmas and a small museum in East Orange County in the town of Christmas, yeah. <laughs> where people could go and visit that as well, learn some of, they could see some of the pioneer houses too that they have yeah. over there in that park. Yeah, again, there's a wealth of resources in Orange County and throughout Central Florida. Uh, Fort Christmas is a great site especially for an outdoor visit right now, if you're trying to stay outdoors and, and keep a lot of space, take a picnic, mm -hmm. take your pup, <laughs> your, your dog, um, play Frisbee. It's a really great little park um, that you can actually go and spend a lot of time just going through this sort of little pioneer village and learning a little bit more about what life would have been like on the frontier, if you will. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then we have Lou Gardens, um, which we had an interview with Lou, Lou mm -hmm. the director from Lou Gardens, and some of the history there, that was around the time when they had the Oh, you know better than me, the orange groves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Again, history is all around us if mm -hmm. you look. You might go to Lou Gardens thinking you're getting a garden, but you also really do get a bonus history lesson, but in a fun way, uh, not in a boring way. It was a historic house there that you can tour. Um, the Lou's were very important. Um, the Bradleys who worked for them are actually a, a very interesting family as well. And so there's just, there's just a lot to learn all around. Um, pay attention. There's mm -hmm. historical street markers, there's mm -hmm. place markers, um, there's buildings with plaques on them. You mm -hmm. never know what you're going to, to learn about something. Um, even walking through downtown, each one of these buildings downtown is so storied. There's so much information. Um, the people who had businesses there, what the business used to be, uh, why the building is designed the way it, it was. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of really cool information. And on top of our exhibits, we actually do a lot of really great programming. Our museum is only so big. On average, most museums have less than 4% of their stuff on display at any time because we don't have big enough buildings for that, right? And so mm -hmm. we do a lot of really great programming on different topics. Um, one of the things we do is a, called a Friday Lunch and Learn series. And it's just a different, seemingly kind of random topic all the time. And so we'll do you know, maybe something in partnership with Lou Gardens or we'll do uh, one in uh, partnership with one of our other area institutions. So we're always trying to um, you know, bring visibility in that way too, because mm. the Wells Built Museum is an excellent little museum here uh, around black history and culture, right? And it's just blocks away. We actually offer a joint ticket with them. The Lou Gardens, um, Bach Tower, which is a little bit further out, but it's a really amazing historical site and a really good place to spend time outdoors as well. I know it's hot right now, but <laughs> it'll get better.
Mm. So yeah, there's a really incredible historical sites um, all over Central Florida, and especially within Orange County, it's just a very large county um, to uh, travel out to and see. Yeah, and to those out there watching, I really didn't know that Orange County had the history that it has, because I'm from up north, New England, Boston area, and there's plenty of U.S. history there. When I came here, I kind of felt like, where's the history that was lacking? But then when I start learning more, there is so much history here that a lot of people just don't realize and know about. We have tens of thousands of objects and photographs and newspapers and archives that tell these stories. And we're still working to uncover some of that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're, we're constantly learning new things. Uh, people come to us and they say, hey, my great grandfather was the so-and-so. And it's like, tell us about that. We've never heard this story. Mm -hmm. We have these incredible journals in our historical collection where we can actually sort of read through the life of people. Um, Jesse Branch, who came here from the Dakotas because of one of these brochures she received from the Chamber of Commerce saying that beautiful flowers are blooming year round. Well, this is in the middle of a Dakota winter. And she's like, let's go there. <laughs> she's actually the person who coined the term the city beautiful. And we have excerpts from her journals. So it's really incredible to kind of get into people's lives, the people who lived it, and to actually learn from them. It's not just sort of facts we read on a sign, right? It's actually the people who had these lived experiences. Uh, and we're uncovering new things every day. And we certainly want all of our residents to, to understand the history, right? Because that's how we learn about the place we're from and why. Why are things the way they are? Well, it's all because of these historical happenings and decision making. And we can use all of that to fuel, you know, a better better path forward for sure. Yeah, I know a question I get a lot is why the orange groves are being destroyed and developed over. Well, there's some history to that because yeah. of the freeze that happened. Well, there's, you know, the freeze, but the there's greening. also, yeah, greening. There's a, a bugs issues. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I can't even name them all, but it, there's just been a lot of, of reasons for that. And sometimes it's the pace of progress. If you can't solve a problem now, we move in a different direction. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's not always the right decision if we're, we're thinking about heritage and industry and things like that. You know, citrus has changed so much. We, we go through the whole history of Dr. Phillips, which is a name everybody knows in terms of um, essentially inventing pasteurization. We can now take our oranges and send them across the nation, right? Because if you think about it, Florida's hot. The minute you pick fruit, it starts to spoil. And all of the ingenuity and time and thought that went into being able to take this Florida product and really make it available to the, to the, the nation, certainly, if not the world, um, that's all part of a really fascinating history and some heritage that does start to get lost as we move on through the pace of progress. Yeah, which is why it's great to learn about it so they can know what you need to preserve, what you should preserve. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Is there anything that you would like to leave our viewers with? I would invite them, of course, to come see the museum, uh, especially since we know, you know, over the next few years, all the exhibits will be redone and brand new. So you can see this version. Uh, and we really just do invite people to look at our programs. We're offering um, a lot of virtual things right now as well in terms of how people are uh, with safety. And it's just a lot of different topics. You might be surprised at what interests you. So we really welcome people to uh, engage with us and not only us, but like you said, there's so many great sites and little things to see around Orange County Take a minute to notice them. Yeah. Thank you so much. This has been great. Thank you for coming. Thanks.